numbers, our registration numbers over on the side. Looks like we've got 80 registrants who've already joined us for the, the sales tax webinar here with TaxJar. Hello, everyone. We're going to just give it a few more minutes. We're up to, looks like, 12% of the total registration. So we're going to just give it a little bit more time before we get going. Hope everybody's excited. You can start leaving some chat comments there. If you have questions, let us know where you are. Great, New Jersey. Another East Coaster for you, Mark. Sales tax. They better be excited. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ron. There we go. Atlanta, Georgia, New York. Romania. There we go. Now we're starting to break the East Coast cycle. <laughs> Romania. That's awesome. Hey guys, really glad to have you. We're just letting everybody settle in before we get started here. Just give it another two minutes or so. Orange County, California. That's a nice spot. We still nice. live there. Ganty's asking who is from Tax Jar and who is from um, JC. But I am the Fetcher man. I'm Shane. I'll get into introductions in a second. And over there is I'm Mark. Good. He's the Tax Jar man. I got my tax jar putty on tonight. Nice. Representing. Hey, everybody. Oregon and Louisiana. Nice. Just another, another minute or two. And we'll get rocking with the content. I don't want anybody to miss solid sales tax content that's coming here in a few minutes. Dimitri from Russia. That's awesome. Jay's asking how long the webinar is going to be. We're going to be right at an hour. We're a punctual crew. We'll be right at an hour or under. And they're Mark, they're straight to the content. Where, I love it. Questions already. Let's go. Sales tax. Let's okay, go. So we'll get, Stay tuned. We'll get going. There's no reason to hold on any longer. Let's get going. So welcome everybody to this live webinar. As I said earlier, this is going to be about a one hour session and we are here to talk about sales tax for Amazon sellers. So I'm this Amazon seller and then Mark over there is the, is the sale tax guru. So we're very, very lucky to have this, um, this real industry expert with us. Mark Fagiano is an entrepreneur at heart, it seems like. Man, he's been an entrepreneur for over 15 years, which is really awesome and inspiration to me. Um, he's built and sold multiple companies. But for today's audience, the real important fact is that he is the CEO of TaxJar. And you can find TaxJar at TaxJar.com. So welcome, Mark. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. Hey, Shane. Great to be here, and uh, thanks for inviting me. Excited for tonight. You got it. So let's keep going. Uh, I want to give an introduction to myself for people who don't recognize my face. Uh, I'm Shane Steinmetz. I'm the director of Fetcher. A little bit of background on me after I graduated from college. I went into the Marine Corps and I was an infantry officer for four years. Then I transitioned into Silicon Valley and got involved in a, in a corporate business up there, a big tech company. But I got a little disenfranchised. I assume kind of similar to a lot of other folks who are on the line, and I think Mark as well. You know, there are just so many levels of bureaucracy at this big tech company that I was working for. And I felt like I could be an influencer and I could make things happen right away. So actually, that's how I found fulfillment by Amazon and, and the Amazon seller space. So I've been a private label seller for a number of years now, but I always saw that there, there was a bit of a gap. How do we take the data in Seller Central, the kind of mess of Seller Central, and translate it to digestible, bite-sized pieces that can help me make decisions for my business? You know, and that's where Fetcher came along. So Fetcher is all about profit analytics for Amazon sellers, taking Seller Central, making it digestible. But that's enough about Fetcher for tonight, because tonight is really all about sales tax. So Mark, could you tell us, you know, give us a little bit of your background? And where did TaxJar come from? Sure. Yeah, happy to. Um, so like you mentioned, been an entrepreneur for a while now. My first and last corporate job, I had a similar experience where I kind of confirmed my what I always knew about myself, that I just couldn't work for anybody else and work in a big company. I wanted to control my own destiny. So started that journey sure. uh, about 15 years ago. And uh, it's really developed into a passion into solving problems for small business owners. So things that get in the way of small business owners just trying to grow their business and control their own destiny, that's what I'm most interested in building products around. 
sales tax is probably the biggest, most confusing um, problem that I've been asked to uh, try to tackle and look into. And I'm, I'm glad I made that decision about three and a half years ago to start this company. Um, and we're all about solving sales tax for e-commerce sellers. And I'll, I'll talk more about it later. But uh, yeah, that, that's, that's my biggest thing is I, I'm super passionate about helping small business owners just be successful um, and, get, and get a lot of satisfaction out of doing that. Man, that is awesome, Mark. And I know we've got a lot of small business owners, um, specifically Amazon sellers in the chat bar right there. So I think they're excited for the content to come. I see we're having maybe a few people who are having technical difficulties signing up. So I'm going to drop in a few other links for people here in a second, but I want to get us going just for the sake of everybody else who's, who's online and having success so far with the connection piece. So I want to just, you know, tell everybody that I'm excited about the content tonight too. I'm an Amazon seller, but it took me six months before I realized that I needed to think about sales tax. You know, that's the honest truth. I spent six months as a seller and had never once realized that I was supposed to be collecting sales tax. Um, so eventually, this is, a, this is a good story, Mark. I guess it was destined, but your marketing team found me somehow. Somehow I got <laughs> redirected to a blog post on, on sales tax and I got reading and realized that I was a little bit out of touch, but still had a bunch of questions. You know, it's a complicated subject. And I'm sure. sure that our audience is probably in the same boat. So, you know, some questions that we're going to go over tonight, guys. Um, do Amazon sellers have to collect sales tax? That's the big one right out of the gate. And then what happens if Amazon sellers don't collect sales tax? So is it going to cost me money to start collecting sales tax? And if it does, you know, how can I avoid those sort of things? But I know we'll get into more of those details. But I think really the biggest question is how do I get started? You know, my time is at a premium. I'm mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, I'm an Amazon seller, I'm focusing on building my business. How do I even get started if I need to be collecting sales tax? So Mark, at this time, I think we can start thinking about getting into the content now. Um, maybe cool. as you're pulling up your screen and starting to share, it's gonna take a few seconds there, guys, for it to adjust so he's got his content ready to share. Um, I'll just continue to field some questions online and we'll get to some of the technical issues now. I'll drop some links in. Thanks, Trish. That's really nice to hear. Shane, I'll look to you to give me the uh, AOK. -okay. Uh, if you can see my screen, everybody out there. I think everybody can see it. If we get one or two comments in the in the chat box saying that they can also see it, we will get rolling. And I promise I'll start dropping all those links. Oh, okay. great. So, so Parish just said, oh, hi, Parish. Nice to see you. I've been talking with you by email a bit. Um, they refreshed their screen and they're up and running. Looks like most people are up and running. So. Mark, let's do it. Okay, let's go. All right, guys. Uh, like I said, excited to be here. Uh, this is a this is a set of content that I've given dozens of times over the last few years, and really have uh, built it around the most commonly asked questions that that we get at Tax Jar. So, um, the goal for tonight is I'm going to cover some basics of sales tax, some of the things that Shane talked about already. I'm going to then connect the dots on how all of that relates to being a seller on Amazon. I'll talk about how to get started, what your next steps are, share some resources for you that you can count on uh, from tonight going forward, and, and uh, also happy to answer questions. One of the big things is uh, I, want, I want to mention up front is, you know, sales tax is complicated. It's probably something uh, that you may just take one or two bits from tonight, and I think that's okay. Um, I certainly understand that it's very hard uh, to wrap your head around it and get it in uh, 30, 40 minutes, something like that. So again, that's why we share resources so that you can have a place to, uh, to go and, and rely on as you're trying to figure out uh, how much of sales tax you want to tackle for your business. Awesome, Mark. And a few people are asking that uh, whether or not the content's going to be available afterwards. The answer is yes. That and plus quite a bit more. So we're going to get you links to a number of other resources that TaxJar's got available, some blog posts, but certainly all of the content here will be available on YouTube. Cool. Scott, I'm going to start working with you now, buddy. Go ahead, Mark. Okay, so uh, already talked uh, probably too much about myself, but one thing I, I just want to emphasize is uh, I'm not a CPA. I'm not a tax professional. Where my expertise comes in is uh, we've, we launched this product three and a half years ago and I've put in my more than 10,000 hours, so to speak on this, talking to thousands and thousands of, um, sellers, especially Amazon sellers, 
talking to folks that work at the state, talking to auditors, talking to tax professionals, um, anybody associated with uh, sales tax, you name it, I've talked to them. And basically what we've done is built a product and a set of educational content that's designed to help you make informed decisions. I'm not here to tell you what to do. Um, it's all about, uh, I, I'm a huge believer in that a small business owner is more than smart enough to make decisions on their own that are best for their business. And I'm just trying to provide content for them that's going to allow them to do that. So here's a pretty typical view of who I talk to and my team talks to every day. And hopefully this will resonate with everybody that's listening. Obviously, it's folks that are making a living online. Uh, that's where our specialty is. A lot of folks are multi-channel FBA sellers. So they're selling on Amazon, but they also have a presence on other uh, marketplaces or they have their own website, basically wherever their stuff sells, right? So a lot of folks are ex-eBay sellers who are now on Amazon. They have some kind of eBay presence. Maybe they have a website. Maybe they're also going to craft fairs using Square or some kind of point of sale device uh, to sell, again, wherever their stuff is going to sell. And the bottom line is they want to be educated about sales tax. They're trying to figure out, hey, is this something that I need to worry about? If so, how do I get started? Um, and, and the other major bucket are folks that have already made the decision to uh, get started and comply with sales tax. And they're <clears throat> running into the sort of the inevitable frustration of this is taking me too much time. I'm looking for a way to just hand this off to somebody who can take this off my plate so I can grow my business. So if you fall into one of those two buckets, uh, by the way, we talk to folks who are both uh, located domestically here in the U.S. and all over the world every day. Um, so hopefully that resonates uh, with the folks that are listening. And uh, keep in mind, folks, we're talking about sales tax. So I, you know, I've tried to inject some humor into this to keep it light. This is the first attempt. Um, we're not. This is not a high comedy topic, so bear with me. But uh, <laughs> well, in, inevitably, yeah, inevitably, when we talk to people. Uh, 99 times out of 100, they just they say something like what's on the screen here. They just don't want to deal with it, and I don't blame them. I mean, who would want to deal with this um, with their business? There's just better ways to spend time. Okay, so let's start with the basics. The basics um, to understand, there is no federal governing body when it comes to sales tax. Okay, so in the, in the U.S. here, there's the IRS, which governs um, income tax and corporate tax. There's no there's no body here that has the same control over sales tax. So instead, what we're left with is a system that is uh, governed by the states. So each of the states here in the U.S. has to make a decision. Hey, do we want to have sales tax or not? Most states do. 45 of the states do. District of Columbia does as well. So essentially what we have are 46 different sets of laws, which means 46 different definitions of nexus about what's taxable and what's not about what the rates are when to charge the rates how to determine the rates and also 46 different definitions around when you need to file your returns so there are some similarities but basically what we are what we have is 46 different countries all making their own laws and that's that's why this can get pretty confusing uh, right off the top by the way here's this is just a visual of all the green states have sales tax laws. So not not many white states in there. Those are the states that have uh, don't have sales tax laws, unfortunately. Okay, so common question around, well, what is even supposed to be, what, what am I supposed to get collect tax on? By the way, I'm just going through general rules. I'll go into much greater detail on a lot of the stuff here in a second. Sure. In general, tangible items are taxable. And uh, so, you know, we're talking about like I'm sitting here at my desk. So my desk, my chair, those are, you know, examples of tangible items, right? The common exceptions, especially for Amazon sellers or folks who are selling clothing and food, those may or may not be taxable. Really depends on what states are involved in a sale. And I'll talk, make that more clear in a little bit later. Services, which probably don't uh, apply to anybody listening here, you know, things like web design or if you're an electrician or something like that. For the most part, those are not taxable. Things like shipping, gift wrapping, those can be taxable, again, depending on what states are involved. 
Okay, so let's uh, let's just go through some examples of of taxability. So here's a lamp. That's a tangible item. We've got the nice little check mark there on the right hand side. That's considered to be taxable. Here's a article of clothing. Again, we've got both highlighted here, taxable and not taxable, because it depends. Some states' clothing is taxable. Some states, it's not. Same with grocery items. Um, drop shipping uh, is also uh, considered to be. Excuse me. This is uh, this is just uh, shipping. So uh, shipping fees can be taxable or not taxable depending on what state. Okay, so here's another attempt at humor. Uh, this is just to illustrate the ridiculous nature um, um, of how much thought has been put into sales tax laws, just the level of minutia involved here. So in the state of New York, and don't hold me to this, that it's actually a law now, it was at one time, this particular item was not taxable, but this item was taxable. No and the, yeah, so the reason is that this item is considered to be a prepared food item. And once item is, once a food item is prepared, it's considered to be taxable. So, uh, again, kind of playing up to the theme on just how crazy this whole thing is. And especially when there's no federal laws, it's all left up to the states. They can put this level of thought into, uh, into things like item taxability. All right. One of the things I hear most is well i don't comply with sales tax i'm i don't do anything with sales tax because i just don't want to pay it and when this is done correctly you're actually not paying anything what you're doing is you're serving as what the states would call a collection agent which is basically a middleman you're collecting the money from your customer and then you're passing that money along to the state when you file a return now that part can get a little bit complicated, but that's really how it's supposed to run. And if you're doing this the right way, you know, thinking about things that you should be taking away from tonight, if you're complying with sales tax the right way, you never should be paying any money out of your own pocket. Again, you should just be passing along the money that you've collected from your customers onto the states. And I can tell you this with utmost confidence that just getting started is the hardest part of sales tax. Um, so if you're at the beginning of this learning curve, it probably, if you're looking up at it, it looks pretty steep. Um, but I'm here to tell you that you can get it automated and get it off of your plate so you don't have to worry about it. So there is hope. All right, let's jump into Nexus. So Nexus is the whole ball game, so to speak. This is why you even care about or potentially care about sales tax. And the, the definition of my definition of Nexus, which a lot of us have probably heard of before um, watching this, is when your business has some sort of presence or connection in a state that's significant enough that the state says you are required to comply with our laws, to follow or comply with our laws. Okay, so, well, how do you get Nexus? Like, what are the ways for my business to trigger Nexus? All right, so let's go back to some visuals here. Here's picture of a home office okay where you're sitting where you're running your business you have nexus in that state okay things like if you have a retail location that counts for nexus employees maybe you have employees out of state those employees will give you nexus website affiliates depending on again depending on what states we're talking about can be a source of nexus trade shows trade show laws are crazy um again level of minutiae there but uh for our customers a lot of them do trade shows that that can cause nexus depending on what state you're you're involved with drop shipping is uh, also another very common nexus trigger um, and one of the more complicated ones and then last but not least which applies to anybody who is with amazon fba and that's inventory. So your inventory sitting in a warehouse in another state is the same as this guy who is your employee in another state. All of these things can trigger Nexus. Okay, so that's usually an eye opener for folks who are new, folks who may have been with um, FBA for a while because Amazon makes absolutely no effort to warn you that uh, you're potentially 
adding Nexus in more states when you sign up for FBA. Um, we hear that literally, we hear that every day about uh, folks are like, oh, I just caught on to this. Nobody told me about this. What do I do? So I just want to share with you here are all of these states in orange as we're speaking right now. These are states where Amazon has warehouses and where um, those states consider uh, that Nexus. Uh, consider your items in those warehouses to be Nexus. So the two in green, those don't have sales tax laws. There's a gray area about Virginia. We should probably have that in green. Um, and if you have specific questions about Virginia, I'm happy to point you in the right direction. But for the rest of them, those are uh, considered to be trigger points of Nexus. I can tell you that map is a lot more orange than it was a couple years ago when we started giving this. Um, and it will probably become almost all orange within the next few years because of Amazon's continued uh, investment in their own infrastructure. Look, their goal is to get to same day, next day, two day delivery in on every single transaction. And the only way they can do that is they got to build more warehouses. And for you, the seller, you all know that, you know, if Shane and I are selling the same items, I have four day turnaround and Shane has next day or same day, I'm going to lose that sale every time. So you're almost in a box. You have to use third party fulfillment. Um, so uh, the other thing, I won't get into too much detail tonight, but there's also these trade winds blowing about federal and state legislation um, where they're starting to catch on, especially the states about, well, there's a lot of money here in e-commerce that I'm hearing about. And uh, we need to find ways to uh, expand our nexus laws to get more people to pay taxes in our state. So that we're starting to see that. We saw a lot of that last year. Who knows what happens with um, the incoming president on how that those things might change and probably not worth spending a whole lot of time other than to say states are starting to pay attention to this and, and take action because they're tired of no federal action. No, oh, that's interesting. All right. So Nexus, again, sort of the basic. That's why you potentially could have to comply. All right. So when should I actually collect the tax? And the golden rule here is that you collect tax when the item you've sold is shipped to a state where you have Nexus. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some visuals. So here's our guy. Here's Joe, he's a seller, he's based in Akron, Ohio. He, we're gonna say for now, he only has Nexus in Ohio and he's just complying in Ohio. Complying means he's following their sales tax laws, by the way. Um, okay, so Joe's store is on the left. He ships an item to Lakewood, Ohio. Because he has Nexus in Ohio, he's going to collect sales tax. The opposite of that is he ships an item to Massachusetts or really any state other than Ohio. He doesn't have Nexus in any state other than Ohio, so he's not going to collect the tax. So if you're thinking, and I talk to people probably almost every day who say this, was, oh man, I don't want to have to collect sales tax in 50 states. Well, 99.9% .9 of companies don't have to do that. Only really the largest of companies usually have Nexus in all the states. So hopefully that, that makes sense. Um, so let's just complicate things a little bit more. Joe's business is growing. He decides to use a third-party fulfillment service. They store all of his stuff in Nevada. So now he's got Nexus in both Ohio and Nevada, and he's decided he's going to comply in both of those states. So now... Um, the key point uh, to make here is that it doesn't matter necessarily where the item is coming from here on the left-hand side. Okay, forgot I had my pointer. All that matters is right here. All that matters is that the item ends up in one of these two states where he has Nexus, so we're going to collect the tax. Okay, so the combination of Ohio to Nevada, Nevada to Ohio doesn't mean a thing. Um, so he doesn't have to collect tax if the item is shipped to any state other than Ohio or Nevada. So in this case, he's sending something to Iowa, doesn't have nexus there, he's not gonna collect. All right, let's just further uh, complicate things and make it a little bit more personal per, for probably a lot of folks on this, on this uh, watching. Now he's using FBA and Amazon is storing his inventory in five states. Now I understand that might be a little bit misleading because you can't really limit how many states they put your stuff in, but just for the sake of argument, 
Um, so he has Nexus in six states now, and he's complying in all six. Looks like we're showing five, and his head is covering up one of those. All right, so here's here's when he's going to collect the tax. Again, all that matters is that the item is being shipped to one of those six states. So the combination thereof, Arizona to Nevada, Nevada to Pennsylvania, Ohio to Indiana, we don't care. All we care about is that it ends up in one of these states, and we're going to collect the tax. And if it ends up in any other state, we're not going to collect the tax. It doesn't matter where it comes from. All right, so we understand why we're sort of forced to comply. We understand um, when to collect the tax. How, how much tax should I actually be collecting? So if you've heard the term sourcing before, that's really the answer. Sourcing is basically the logic behind how much to collect. And the state where the item is shipped determines the tax rate. So if you live in California and you ship something to Texas and you have Nexus in Texas, the, the tax rate is going to be based on Texas is sourcing, not based on California. I do, I do hear that every once in a while. People think that they would charge the California rate in every other state in the country. It's the state to where the item is uh, shipped to that's going to determine the rate. Now, where you're online and you're buying something, you may see in checkout uh, sales tax, they show the percentage maybe. Uh, uh, it's 8%. I'm just making it up. That that seems simple, but really what's going on behind the scenes is there may be a, th that may be the sum of applicable rates. So there may be a state rate that's involved. There may be local rates such as city and or county rates. There may be special education, transportation, stadium taxes, all combined up into one that add up to that 8%. So there's a lot of parties at the table basically, and that'll make more sense in a, in a second. For the most part, there's two basic ways, two ways that the rates get sourced, okay? The less popular in about a third of the states is called origin-based sourcing. Okay, this is where the tax rate is based on where the seller is located, okay? So sellers in origin-based states are actually lucky because they can charge a single rate for sales to anybody in their state. I'll show some visuals in a second. Two-thirds of the states actually use the more complicated form of sourcing, which is destination-based. This is where the tax rate is variable because it's based on where the item is shipped. So let's, sh let's show an example. Here's a seller in Irving, Texas, selling to some, uh, shipping something to Archer City. Uh, the tax rate, because this is an origin-based state, is based on where this person is in Irving. The effective tax rate in Irving is the state rate there's a county rate and there's a mass transit tax equaling eight and a quarter percent. So this guy in Irving is charging eight and a quarter percent for every sale to um, that he ships to somebody in Texas. All right, so destination sourcing is the opposite. This is, this is our seller in Stanford, New York, which is a destination-based state. The item is shipped to Buffalo. This is where we're gonna pull the effective tax rate from. And in Buffalo, there's a state rate plus a county rate, and that comes out to eight and three quarters percent. This is early in 2017. I haven't checked these rates. It's only been a few days, so don't hold me to if if you're in Buffalo and your sales tax rate has changed. Um, so theoretically, that's this seller here in Stanford, New York, could make I don't know 50 sales and ship them to 50 different locations in New York and have 50 different tax rates being used. So obviously that's more complicated. Okay, so take a deep breath. I know that's a lot to take in. Let's connect the dots and figure out how, how does this all matter for or, or work if you're an Amazon seller. The, the really good news is that a lot of the stuff that I just explained, you can just empty out of your head and focus on where you have Nexus because Amazon has probably the most robust tax collection service of any marketplace or a shopping cart. Um, it does, you, you do have to pay a fee. The cost is 2.9% of the taxes collected, which is well worth it because the other choices, you don't collect the tax and you pay it out of your pocket. Um, it's robust because 
you can do a couple of things. Number one, it'll collect the local taxes, so the city or county taxes. Not all marketplaces will do that. I'm talk, thinking about eBay as I say that. eBay only collects the state rate. So on eBay, it's literally impossible to collect sales tax accurately. Um, and Amazon will actually allow you to tag product tax codes to each individual item that you sell. So when we talked about taxability back at the beginning, basically you can differentiate between you know a cell phone case, a lamp, and a pair of shorts. And what Amazon is doing in real time is looking at, okay, we're selling this, uh, sending this clothing item to New York. Let's look up the clothing laws in the state of New York. Is it or isn't it taxable up to a certain degree for certain amounts? And we'll charge the correct tax. So they do all that. They do all that hard part for you if you pay for the service. Um, by the way, product tax codes. If you don't use those then Amazon can't tell the difference if you're selling all kinds of different stuff. They're going to treat everything the same. So they're going to they're going to treat the box of Cheerios the same as the lamp. Uh, and again, you may be overcharging or undercharging your taxes if you don't um, activate product tax codes. The bad news is that it's up to you, the seller, to enable the collection. So I hear nightmare stories literally every day about, well, I've been a seller, and Shane even mentioned this, um, you know, I've been selling on Amazon for months, years even, and I, I I had no idea either. I had no idea the taxes were going to be collected or had to be collected. I thought Amazon was doing it for me, um, or I just thought you know once I got set up that all this was just taken care of. So um, Amazon does not give you really any sort of guidance or advice. They don't tell you how to collect in FBA states. We TaxJar does. They don't tell you where necessary to collect. Tax chart does that as well. Um, and the other thing, the byproduct of this, um, not only in the confusion, is we we see a lot of cases of folks who are basically checking the wrong boxes when they sign up for tax collection and they're collecting wrong and they lose money because of it. Yeah, this is huge, Mark. This is where the majority of confusion happens amongst the Amazon space, especially amongst new sellers, because it it's a complicated topic. And Amazon doesn't give us any guidance. So we're out right. there sort of swinging in the air, trying to figure out what to do. So that's obviously why we're here today. Sure. And we're happy to take all those questions. Um, in fact, one of the first things that we did as a company, we got so many of the same questions over and over again from Amazon sellers is we put this website together, fbasalestax.com. There's an ebook there. You can go download it. It's basically uh, very similar to the discussion we're having right now. It has even more detail. What it also includes is, uh, that's really important, is it has the exact settings that you need to use for every state, uh, whether you live in that state or you're living out of state, or for if you want to collect tax. So it's basically got a cheat sheet, and that's where people find the most value in that um, in that ebook. So I highly encourage you to go check that out. That's great. It looks like Michelle online has read the ebook, says it's awesome and so easy to understand and read. So really helpful resource. Cool. Thanks, Michelle, for sharing that. That's great. Um, we, we always get, we, we get great feedback on that. I mean, it's just all the basics and people find it super helpful. Um, okay. So now that we've got the tax in our bank accounts, what are we supposed to do with it? So let's go through filing and deadlines. So, um, how often you file sales tax returns is really tied to how much taxes you're collecting. Uh, the more you collect, the more frequently the state's going to ask you to, uh, to file returns and pay. So when we talk about frequencies, they go all the way from annual down to, you know, being the least frequent down to monthly being the most frequent. Um, by the way, and I'll, I'll get into this in a little bit, you'll get assigned a frequency when you get a sales tax license. So a sales tax license is essential to being able to collect and pass on that tax to a state. Again, I'll get into that in a second. When you're supposed to file those returns, usually comes at the latter half of the month. A lot of states' most popular day is the 20th of the month, um, but some are as early as the 15th, and some are on the last business day of the month. It's different in every state. Um, as, we're, as we're talking now, it's early 
2017, a lot of states tend to reevaluate frequencies of their taxpayers and will reach out to sellers either online or uh, uh, via the mail to say, hey, look, uh, based on your volume, we're changing you from monthly to quarterly or from annual to monthly. Um, so make sure that you open the mail that you get from your Department of Revenue um, and make sure that you're compliant and following on the correct frequency. If not, call your state if you have any sort of doubts. So just to kind of put all this together, this is a very typical filing scenario that we see with our customers um, and it can be really confusing. So let's say an e-commerce business is filing returns in three states. Because there's not a whole lot of congruence between the deadlines um, and the frequencies, uh, you could be filing monthly in one state on the 20th of every month. You could be filing quarterly in another state, which their deadline is the last business day of the month. And then you're filing annually in a third state, which is the 25th of the month. And that's all enough to just make your head spin, right? Because you're just trying to keep track of when the heck am I supposed to file these things? Um, so unfortunately, it's not as straightforward as I'm filing in three states. They're all due on the 20th and they're all you know due monthly. Really important to pay on time. Uh, some states have discounts for on-time payment. Might not seem like a lot, but if you're at any sort of scale, one to 2% is could be significant money. Uh, it's free money. You absolutely should take the states up on that. These states in green are the ones that have the uh, filing on time discounts. I wish they all had them, especially California, because that's so hard to file. And unfortunately, all the states are, are in agreement that if you are late, they're going to penalize you for that. So there are late payment charges. There are interest on what wasn't paid. And I, I throw this in there. What late, quote unquote, actually means um, is different in every state. So we see some states, you know, as soon as the clock turns 12.01 a.m., they're going to start charging late payment charges, whereas others may give you a couple of days, a few days, a week, something like that. They're, they're much more lenient. The point I want to make on this one is once you've made the decision to comply in a state, you have to file returns. So um, if you don't, you will get fined. Uh, Texas is renowned for this, um, or you could potentially lose your sales tax license. So we see sometimes people will say like, well, I didn't file a return because I didn't make any sales to that state or uh, all my sales were tax exempt. So I didn't collect a dime in, in taxes or other people will say, you know, I went on a sabbatical or I took time off. I put my business to the side. I had a family health crisis, something like that. The state doesn't care. Unfortunately, what, what their stance is, look, if you're going to commit and we tell you to file quarterly, we better get four returns. Even if all four returns say your sales were zero. So that's, that's what zero returns are. Once you make that commitment, you have to file something. All right, so in terms of filing returns, what we say here is it's all about getting the data. So you have to gather all of your sales and tax information across all of your channels and put it in a format uh, that the state requires. Okay, this will make more sense in a second. And then you file the returns. This, this for a lot of folks, uh, if not every e-commerce business, is the most challenging part because they've got... Uh, an Amazon sales tax report. They've got um, something from eBay. Maybe they're even taking cash because they're going to trade shows or something like that. And they've got to basically reconcile all of that um, in a format that the, that the state requires. Um, throw into that what we commonly see are things like you're not collecting taxes on all of your channels. Um, you're not collecting accurately. So you're just trying to figure out like, what I collected versus what I should have collected. Um, and you flat out don't have any time, right? This is just like a waste of time. Well, why am I even trying to do this? I'm trying to do the right thing, but it's just too hard. Um, skip up to the first bullet point there. Um, keep in mind that I, I'm not sure I have this in a later slide, so I'm just going to say it now. If you are collecting tax, uh, let's say in Texas and Florida on Amazon, but you also sell on eBay, it's important to collect those taxes in those two states on eBay, on, you know, if you have a store that you host on Shopify or something like that. 
the the nexus isn't unique to the channel it applies to your entire business filing returns in those destination based states are the biggest of all pains and the reason why is that reconciliation of the of your sales and and taxes collected the states actually rely on you to divide up the money you've collected for every jurisdiction in the state um, and this is this is hard enough as it is. It's it's really hard if you fit that multi-channel kind of model that a lot of us fit into. Um, so it's not enough for Cal. I'm going to pick on California, my former home state, to say, "Hey, California, here's my quarterly return. I had twenty five thousand dollars in sales, and I collected twenty five hundred. Here you go." The reason why is because California says, "Well, um, unless you sold all all of that twenty five thousand." to one customer or one location, it's our job as a state to distribute that $2,500 that you've paid us to all of the parties involved, to all of the counties that you made that you made sales to. They all have their hands open saying, where's my cut? Um, so for example, this is a pretty crude screenshot, but this is a Schedule B in the state of California. If any of you have had to file this, you're probably breaking out um, sweating right now, but um, basically what they're asking here is to tell you how much tax you collected, uh, which is basically 1% of your sales um, in each of these counties. And by the way, we have the quick answer to that. So tax chart does this automatically on a daily basis, basically it gives you to the, an the answers that you would need to, f to fill out that schedule will be. Jancy, hopefully okay. that's Hopefully that's answering your questions earlier about how counties are involved. Man, it, it gets really complex. Yeah, and I tried to keep that as simple as possible. So, um, if we were, uh, if we were all sitting in the same room, I would probably be looking at which I've done, you know, dozens of times. This is typically the look that I see on people's face if they haven't gotten up and walked away. Um, so, if if that's the way you're feeling, you're 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 uh, you're not alone. So okay. So what do you do, right? Th these are really your options. The first one is to stick your head in the sand and hope this all goes away. My my thought on this, and look again, I'm trying to just provide you information so you can make the best decisions you can for your business. This really is not a good option, um, and uh, states are becoming more aggressive on this, especially your home state. You need to be compliant in your home state. I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, but this is not going away. Um, and in fact, it's probably going to get more complicated. And again, states are kind of waking up to um, the reality of e-commerce and what a windfall of money here is. So this slide is kind of gross, admittedly. But the really important point that I'm trying to make here is that your best effort is better than no effort. Your best effort is better than the head in the sand. And what we found in um, uh, working with states is they know that this is complicated, okay? So if you've done everything you could to comply and you're off by you know, $50 or a half a percent or something like that, state's not gonna care, right? There, there actually is no such thing as being absolutely perfect when it comes to this stuff. They're happy that you're complying, and um, you know they'll they'll give you a call or send you a letter if you're way off, um, if they can even realize if you're way off. But uh, I, again, they're willing to be, for the most part, in our experience, they're willing to be understanding and give you a chance uh, to get things right if it's not right. Uh, the other point I want to make is that this sales tax compliance should not cost you an arm and a leg. You should not be feeling a lot of pain in terms of how much you're paying, whether you're paying a tax professional, or you're paying for software, um, it shouldn't be expensive. Uh, it should be automated and it should be simple and it should be affordable. All right. So I'm, uh, hopefully we're doing okay on time here, Shane. I got a little bit. Yeah, we're good. More to go. We're good. Okay. We've got, we've got 15 minutes right now. It's okay if we go a little bit over, but I'm okay. really glad that you drove home that point there about making an effort is is the first step you know because we've got a lot of people in the question box or who are concerned about trying to be totally accurate you know they've been an fba seller maybe for six months do they need to go back and claim those past six months or do they start today you know those are the kind of questions we're getting right now and i think everyone's glad to hear that making a strong honest effort is the beginning
Yeah, and I'm I'm happy to um I'm happy to answer that specific question too because we get asked asked that one a lot when we uh, go to Q and A. So. Oh great. Um, okay, I'll hold it for that. Okay. Um, all right. So, you know, where where do you go from here? What we think is most appropriate is that you comply in your home state. That's the first place to comply. Um, reason being is because, you know, the home state knows about you, right? You're filing income tax there. You probably have your business registered there. Um, it's the easiest dots for them to connect to say, hey, I see, I see Shane's doing pretty well. What's he doing with sales tax? Well, let's go take a look. Um, and you know that sort of gives them license to uh, to come after you if you're not doing anything. What does it mean to comply? Well, it means to get a sales tax license. You can't collect sales tax without a license, okay? Not legally. Um, and basically, that uh, your next step is to enable the sales tax collection wherever you're selling. So, for example, going into Seller Central, turning on their service, turning it on in your shopping cart wherever you're selling, taking that money in, and then paying it and filing the returns to the state. That's when we talk about compliance. That those are the basic steps. Okay, what do you do from there? Well, uh, branching out to to new states, for example, the FBA states. Um, would be a step two. Um, you know, this where where we start to getting into what do I do if I've had sales or I have a history in a state and I just didn't know about this stuff. There are ways that you can um, basically set things right with the state, and one of them is a what's called a voluntary disclosure. Um, a, a lot of this is case by case stuff. I can't emphasize enough. Uh, if you're a seller at any sort of scale and you're worried about this. Um, I would highly recommend getting a tax professional to handle something like a voluntary disclosure for you. Uh, I can make a, a very confident red, uh, recommendation on that for folks if they need it. Um, we can certainly help with this because we know it's a, it's a very stressful decision on how to push forward. Um, we get the question a lot about, well, who's going to even know, right? I'm just sitting here in Kentucky. I'm selling my stuff. Uh, I'm not going to worry about some guy in you know, some department of revenue in Minnesota coming after me. I mean, be real. Um, I, that's, listen, you have your own way of thinking about it. I think that's totally valid depending on the size of your business. And the decision is really up to you. The laws are what they are. Um, I'm not making up the laws. The laws say that these things cause nexus and you're supposed to comply. Are there people who are not complying for sure, right? Are they getting away with it? Definitely. Risk tolerance is, is the guide to this whole thing. We see that folks fall into two camps. I mean, like right down the middle, definitively, there are the folks that say, look, I don't like the idea of not complying. I don't like the idea of going to bed at night thinking I'm doing something wrong. I don't want to risk my business. I'm going to comply anywhere. I don't care what my sales are. Um, then there's the other camp that says, look, I'm going to be a little bit more realistic about this. And this is the camp that I would fall into if I was going to start an e-commerce business today and say, look, I'm going to comply in my home state. And then I'm going to, I'm going to monitor my sales in other states where I have Nexus or potentially have Nexus. And when I start selling at some sort of scale where the taxes I was supposed to collect are a threat to my business, if I don't pay them, I'm going to go ahead and comply in that state. Um, and let me, I, I'll show you how a tax chart actually helps with that. Um, the, the last point, and I've, I made this a, a bunch, is you know, e-commerce is not going anywhere and legislation is sort of being bandied about. Uh, so this stuff is not gonna go, is not gonna go away. So look, uh, if you remember one thing about tax chart is we exist to make all of this um, simple for folks. We do everything from, um, Calculate how much sales tax should be collected if you're, you know, using something other than Amazon, for example. Uh, we compile all that data into reports that can be used for you or your tax professional to file those returns much more quickly and efficiently than if you're trying to do it on your own with spreadsheets. And then we have a third option, third feature called auto file, where if you say, look, take care of the whole thing, file these returns for me automatically, you can pay an extra fee and we'll take care of that for you. We have automated um, integrations with all of these platforms where we will take 
your sales and tax data on a daily basis and pull them down and compile them on a state by state basis. And you can see things like your sales tax collected by state. We also highlight if you're collecting accurately or not. I'll go into more of that in a second. Um, for if you're an Amazon seller, we'll tell you where you have Nexus because we can tell where your inventory is. That'll help you again, make decisions on where you um, potentially want to comply. Um, we'll break down your sales and taxes collected by jurisdiction. If a state like California, for example, requires that we're basically giving you the answers to the test so that you can go ahead and file that return. Um, and, and here it is. If we'll tell you if you're collecting sales tax accurately or not. So in this case, um, this person is, hasn't collected at all. We're highlight, highlighting the fact that they, um, you know, are almost 10 bucks shy of how much they should have collected. Um, and here's our uh, feature to automatically file. So we, we file automatically in almost every state. We're adding more states uh, very shortly. Folks ask for Texas and Washington and Arizona. We're working on those pretty hard. Um, and we'll, we'll have that filled in green, nice and green um, pretty soon. We've got more than 7,000 customers. Um, some of these you may recognize. Um, and just want to talk about resources. So we've got a YouTube channel. For, for those folks who prefer video to reading, uh, we've got a tremendous community. Uh, I think this is almost 6,000 people on Facebook. If you go to salestaxcommunity.com, it'll redirect you to Facebook. There are people talking every day, all day long, about sales tax compliance as an e-commerce seller. There are tax pros in there. There are tons of people from overseas asking questions. Uh, it's really amazing. Uh, how much content is created there. If you have any questions, uh, you can talk to somebody there. And then we also, I'm proud to say, have this amazing blog run by Jennifer Dunn, where we answer probably the, I don't know, top three or 400 questions when it comes to sales tax compliance. Uh, I think there's 600 posts on there now. Um, and uh, there's a lot of really good stuff uh, for you if you want to try to dig in a little bit deeper. If you'd rather do just talk to somebody, give us a call. Uh, here's our uh, toll-free number, and we're uh, certainly happy to chat with you. Uh, you can get started with TaxJar for free. We offer a 30-day free trial. There's no credit card required at all. Uh, we offer both monthly and annual subscriptions. Uh, they're, uh, they're based on your transactional volume, so it depends on how many transactions you're sending us. It starts off at $19 a month for up to 1,000 transactions. That's across all of your channels, whatever you're sending us. And then if you want us to file a return for you, it's uh, $19.95 for each return that we file. You also have the option to file the returns on your own for free. Um, if you have any sort of questions, if this tool can help you, just try the free trial. And there's no risk whatsoever. Um, again, we're not asking for your credit card. Go in there, figure out, for example, where you have Nexus, how much tax you should have collected in those states where you have Nexus. We tell all of that um, for you, and uh, you know we're, we're happy to help in any way. Our, our team is passionate about um, helping sellers be successful, and uh, especially when it comes to sales tax. Well, that's awesome, right. Mark. So that's all I got. Happy to answer any questions. Oh, sorry, Mark. I just realized I was on mute. So That's let's okay. jump right into the questions. So Sean asks, we talked about this earlier. He did $200,000 in FBA starting out in February, 2016. It sounds like he wants to comply, but when should he should comply? Does he need to go back or should he start collecting today? Yeah. So, uh, this is a this is a decision that he's going to have to make. Um, here's how it works: he can make the decision to ignore the 200k in sales and go ahead and comply in his home state. What he does by doing that is risk. If let's say he's paying, I don't know, he's paying some significant amount to that state, the first thing they're going to do is like, oh, where's this guy been? Like, let's take a look and and they'll ask him if he has a history, if his if he's being truthful about when his first date of sale was in that particular state. So now you're in a situation where you've got to make a decision if you want to lie or you want to be honest with the state. If you 
lie and they catch you, that could be pretty uh, significant in terms of penalties and fees. Um, that's where a voluntary disclosure comes in. And it's basically like going to the state and saying, look, I had no idea, whatever the reasons were, I, I just didn't comply. I want to get this right. Um, and they'll basically cut you a deal so that you don't have to pay um, you know, the uh, full value of what you should have collected. And you're also protected that they can't come after you for what you should have collected. Um, hopefully that makes sense. If you're thinking about doing that, I highly can't recommend it enough. Letting a tax professional take care of that process for you. Uh, cause we see businesses make huge mistakes trying to handle this on their own, uh, especially, you know, larger sellers, 200 K is not, not nothing by any means. Um, so happy to make recommendations if they reach out to us and, um, uh, I, I didn't mention our support email. It's support at taxyard.com. We can make recommendations on who to talk to about voluntary disclosure agreements. Great. Okay. So a few more questions. Here's one for you, Mark. This is specific to the Amazon space because we have a lot of people who live internationally, but sell in the U S so they don't have a home state. Do you have any recommendations for them? Sure. So uh, according to the laws, uh, Nexus applies to international sellers as well. So, for an international seller involved in US FBA, um, that state would say, look, your stuff is here. You have nexus in our state. We don't care um, that you're not necessarily based in the US. So the laws apply to those folks as well. Um, now, again, comes down to risk tolerance. Uh, we see a lot of international uh, sellers using tax share, for example, that are at some sort of scale. Uh, you know, you're selling a small amount probably not worth your time, but you know, if you have plans to have a big business and you're going to support your family, um, you know, they probably need to be thinking about it. There are actually experts in tax who will get everything set up. Uh, Sylvia Dion is one of them who will get everything set up for you, uh, as an international seller. Out to us at support at tax Um, um, and uh, make an introduction for you, and they can walk you through what the process would be to get set up in those states as an international business. So say, everything applies, whether you're based here in the U.S. or if you're international. Great. Okay, here's the big one. Everybody wants to know a dollar threshold, Mark. I know this <laughs> is a difficult issue, but everybody wants to know, what is scale? What does he mean when he says your business is starting to scale and therefore starting to think about sales tax? Uh, people are throwing out their numbers, you know, I'm doing this many thousands of dollars or this many hundreds of dollars per week. Sure. You know, what, what, what do you say to that? Sure. Uh, so it depends on the business. Not, I'm not trying to like give a wishy-washy answer. Um, it depends on what your, what makes you nervous, right? So, um, you know, you could be doing, uh, I'm just going to pick a random number. You could be doing sales and you, uh, you use something like tax jar and it says you should have collected $10,000 or even a thousand dollars in the state of California. Well, if California um, comes after you for that thousand dollars, is that thousand dollars meaningful to you? Uh, plus penalties and interest, right? Is that put you in a situation where you may have to go out of business for some businesses just getting started? Yeah. Uh, for others, they may say, you know what? I'm not going to worry about it until that thousand turns into 20,000. If the state comes after me for 20,000 plus penalties and interest, I'm in trouble. Another business may say, you know what? 50,000. But the thing to keep in mind is as your business grows and you gain more visibility and you get more customers in a particular state that uh, increases the, the chances that that state could find out about you. Um, and uh, basically call you out and say, hey, look, you're supposed to be collecting taxes here. Uh, uh, why aren't you? And uh, we want to see, uh, you know, how much in sales you have in our state. So uh, the, the, the very common follow-up question is, well, what are the states that you hear are most aggressive? California, for sure. Um, and then we hear bits and pieces of other ones. Uh, Texas, Tennessee, Virginia. Uh, those seem to be uh, the most knowledgeable when it comes to e-commerce, especially Amazon. Um, and others are, like I said, are, are getting up to speed. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Interesting. Yeah, that's really good. Um, and then let's just do one more. A lot of people are asking about the sales tax permits. It's awesome that tax jar will help with that process. But do you have any idea roughly 
uh, mark how much a sales tax permit costs. And if someone was going to comply in say 10 Nexus states, you know, or 10 states, are they, are they in trouble there financially? How much are these things running? Yeah, so the good news on that is um, most of them are free and you can do them on your own. We have on our blog, for example, I think we have a guide on every state how to get a license. So you can go to our blog and check that out. You can do it on your own. You know, the investment there is time. Uh, if you, if that doesn't sound fun to you, um, we have a service. I think it's $75 per, per, uh, per permit plus if the state charges. So some charge like 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Um, and we'll take care of all that for you and you get to save the time. Uh, so, you know, it really comes down to if you want to spend the time on it or not. Great. Yeah, well, it makes sense. Um, so thanks everybody for the questions. I'm going to shut down the chat box just in the sense I'm not going to field any more questions right now. Mark's already reiterated this, but if you have more questions, go to taxjar.com, give them a call. And I know that they've got a lot of good content on the blog to field that stuff. So just kind of a parting shot for me. Um, at least my takeaway from this is it's critical to make an informed, like, educated decision about whether or not you want to be sales tax compliant. Don't be like me during the first six months of my life as an FBA seller and be and let indecision be my decision because I was making no decision. You know, I was basically making a decision that I wasn't going to comply, but it's based of, based off of ignorance. So make an informed and educated deci uh, decision to, to comply or not. Um, and then lastly, guys, I would still recommend going to fetcher.com. It's a good place where you can quickly calculate your 2016 profits. So everybody's getting ramped up for 2017 right now. We're talking about sales tax. We've got deadlines coming in a number of states here in the same month. You need to know how you perform in 2016. So on Fetcher, you can get a free trial and we'll show you exactly what your profitability was in 2016. You can use that information to make an informed decision about how you're going to comply with sales tax or not. And, and you can get moving with your 2017 plan. So uh, along those lines, we've also got a full profit analytics webinar that's running tomorrow. We're running it in three different time zones. So back to back webinars. And we're going to be talking all about calculating 2016 profits, using that information to make decisions in 2017, i.e. related to taxes. So Mark, uh, I'll leave it to you to close this out. Any last you know, questions or call or not questions necessarily, but you know, statements or asks of our audience today? If they have any, any questions or if there's anything we can do to help, don't hesitate to reach out. That's honestly why we exist. Um, and uh, this, is our, this is our thing and this is what we get excited about. And uh, yeah, happy new year to everybody. Go out and crush it this year. And Shane, thanks so much for, uh, thanks so much for having us on here tonight. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. You're very welcome. And, and according to the, to, the, uh, to the inbox here, I can see that a lot of people are really pleased with the software, the service that you're providing. So it's a much needed service. Everyone's going to cool. go and check it out and uh, we'll be in touch. Fetch your tax jar. Sounds great. All right. Take care, everyone. See you guys. Thanks for having me.